Hello and welcome to this video about Zigbee 802.15.4. In this video I would like to talk about the packet structure, the message structures, which are required to set up such a star topology in a Zigbee in a 802.15.4 network. Therefore we have different kinds of messages and I would like to explain these messages. The standard 802.15.4 is specified on both layers in the, the Mac layer and the physical layer. And on these two layers, especially on the Mac layer, we have four specialized messages which are specified. And in the physical layer, we of course also have a part of 48 bits which is required to work on the physical layer in the 802.15.4 network. First, there is the beacon package. This is a message which is sent by the coordinator to all surrounding reduced function devices, to all devices which are subordinated in this star topology. And the beacon packet then signals the beginning of an active phase. Then there are data packets which can be sent from both both types of participants from the reduced function devices and from the full function devices to each other. They contain the actual application data like temperatures or light values or whatever you want to monitor in your surrounding environment. Then you have acknowledgements. Acknowledgements serve for the acknowledgement of a reception of a data packet. So if the receiver successfully received a packet, then it can signal this success to the sender of the message so that the sender knows that it should not send again to make sure that the data arrived. And then there are also command messages, commands which might be required for the management of the network structure. Now we have a quick look at the physical layer of the 802.15.4 standard. There we have different frequencies on which we can operate to realize such a structure in 802.15.4. In the frequencies 868 and 915 MHz, there are lower data rates possible because there are lower symbol rates available and in 2.4 gigahertz there are higher data rates available and you can transmit a little bit quicker. But overall you see that 250 kbit per second is not that much and you would not expect to transmit any multimedia data via this network. Actually this technology is also not designed for such high performance data transmissions. It's designed for transmitting the measurements of physical values, for example, in building environments or in monitoring environmental data, and therefore you do not need any higher data rates. So 250 kbit per second actually is quite much for these kind of applications. And you see that you are allowed to transmit with 100 milliwatt transmitting power. That's not much, and there is the range for the communication is quite limited, but still enough for the application cases in which you would deploy such a standard. And now in the next step we have a closer look onto the frame of the physical layer, so the lowest layer in this 802.15.4 standard. If we look at the start of such a packet then we see that there is a preamble and a start of frame delimiter. Delimiter. So what, what do we need these parts for? The preamble and the start of frame delimiter is also required in wired networks because at the receiver point you somehow have to detect that there is a message starting, that there is soon a message starting and you would signal with a characteristic sequence that soon a message starts. Then the receiver can tune in into this sequence and detect when exactly the data packet starts and when the frame length, the next part of the message, is actually transmitted. The frame length then determines how long the frame, how long the data packet is, which will be transmitted, such that you can detect the end of the message and then finally at the end also detect 
the frame check sequence, which we see in a minute. Then there is a reserved bit, and in the last part of this message, of this physical layer message, there's the PSDU. So this is actually the payload of the next layer, and therein the data from the Mac layer package will be put in. If we then have a look on the Mac layer, on the Mac layer message structure, then we first have the frame type, which is leading this part of the message. And before we have talked about the different frame types, and that's what you can see again here. We can have a beacon frame, a data frame, or a command frame, which is possible to send management commands for the network. And in this frame type, these kind of different types are decoded so that at the receiver you can see what kind of packet is this data packet. In the next part we have a sequence number, so that means that we can use this byte to give a sequence number to each packet and that we can put together the packets in a certain order at the receiver if we finally received the messages. And therewith we can also signal the sender which sequence, which sequence number might be missing if a data packet was destroyed during transmission. Following the sequence number we have bytes for the addressing. In the address there is the PAN identifier for the destination address and the actual destination address of the device in the destination network. And in the same uh, in the same range of the addressing fields, there's the source PAN identifier, which identifies from which PAN the message actually originates. And also a source address, which marks the address of the device which sends the message. After that, there's the frame payload. This, so this is the actual payload, which takes care about the application data. And at the end, you have a frame check sequence, FCS, and therewith you are able to check the integrity of the message if some bit error occurred and you might ask for a replay if this frame check sequence does not comply with the content of the message. Like in other standards, this frame check sequence is computed with a certain algorithm. What you can see is the main structure of this frame. You have a certain structure with a header, with a payload and with a footer. So in the first part, the frame type, the sequence number and the addressing fields are contained in the MAC header, the MHR part. Then it is followed by a payload, something which is important for the upper layers. And it is concluded by a MAC footer, the MFR part. And now let's take a look into different frame types, especially the payload, the MAC payload in different frame types. So here we have the beacon frame format. In the beacon frame format, of course, we have again this MAC header, uh, as explained before in the slide before. This MAC header um, contains the frame type, the sequence number and some addressing. And after that, the MAC payload then actually contains the super frame specification and other fields. The super frame specification is now determining important parameters for our communication in Zigbee in 802.15.4. It contains the beacon order and the super frame order. So therewith we set on the one hand the length of the active phase and the duration between two consecutive beacons. And with this set of parameters we are able to tune the communication in the network such that there is either a lot of energy conservation, so not much energy is consumed. For example, if you have a very slow process, you choose a very low beacon order and a very high super frame order, or you want to choose a communication where you don't have to pay attention to energy consumption, and then you would choose different values, so maybe values of beacon order and super frame order, which are close to each other.
Another important part of the message is the GTS fields. They take care about the guaranteed time slots. And if you have maybe a guaranteed communication which should take place between the reduced function devices and the full function devices, then you would assign such guaranteed time slots in this part of the Mac payload. And finally, you have the beacon payload, which is actually containing the information from the upper layers of the stack. Here you can see the data frame format. So this is a frame which transports user data from one participant to the other. And you see in general the structure is almost the same. You have a Mac header, you have a Mac payload and the Mac footer. And in the payload, in the Mac payload area, and then you have only data to transmit, so no management information about the super frame order or the beacon order, but only payload, which then informs about the application data, which somehow is connected in upper layers. We have one more data packet, a very short data packet, the acknowledgement frame format, which serves for the purpose to tell the sender of a message that it was successful or unsuccessful to send a certain message. Successful in this case would mean that the sender of a message receives an acknowledgement package with the sequence number which it sent before. If this kind of the, the, um, acknowledgement frame is not sent from the receiver to the sender, then the sender knows that this particular frame with a certain sequence number was not received by the receiver. Maybe there was a transmission error, maybe there was a bit error in the transmission, then the receiver would not acknowledge the data transmission. And then the sender knows that after a certain time there was no acknowledgement message with this sequence number and it would send uh, it would then send the message again. And the last message we have here is the command frame. The command frame again has a Mac header, a Mac payload and a Mac footer. And now we have in the Mac payload here, the command frame identifier and the command payload. So that means that you can send management commands in the network to somehow impact the network structure of your PAN, of your personal area network. So finally, we have seen that we have different frame structures in 802.15.4 on different layers. On the physical layer, there's a certain structure in 48 bits leading such a data packet. And then there's the beacon packet from the coordinator to the reduced function devices. There's a data packet with application data from one participant to the other. There's an acknowledgement packet and a command packet for managing with certain network commands.